Thought he had a goal. There's a long ball in. The two Cork defenders in each other's way. O'Gara to Bernard Brogan, and Brogan not going to miss from there. In additional time at the end of the first half, the gap swells to four. But what a 60 seconds, and Kerrigan almost scored a goal down at the other end. Brogan comes down and does this. Yeah, great presence of mind by O'Gara, something you don't normally associate with him. Kept the head, realised that Brogan's on fire, gave him the broken ball. But just watch this one. Whoa, that was right, nearly right into the top corner. No score for either team at the start of the second half. McConnell for Dublin in front of Hill 16. There's the first point of the second half, and their lead swells just that little bit more. Five-point game. They had a five-point lead during the first half, too. Well, manufactured and, cr and finished off by McConnell that time. Won the ball from the throw-up and took on the responsibility. Scores a fine point. Cork certainly using the hand pass. Are they overusing it? Pierce O'Neill. They found goals hard to come by in this championship. The fewest of the four teams remaining in this championship. Here's Daniel Gooding. They badly need that point. And he's trying to lift those around him and the Cork followers here in Croke Park. Daniel Goulding. Yeah, it's taken 12 minutes to get the first score of the second half. Well taken with Daniel Golding, considering some of the misses he's had up to now. That should give them a kickstart. Niall Corkery. That long ball and O'Gara has it. Cadigan there, it breaks for Owen O'Gara. Bernard Brogan there with it. He's had a terrible time shooting Owen O'Gara. Here's Bernard Brogan. The exact opposite of O'Gara in terms of shooting for points. And that's their reply to Cork's first point of the second half. And it's from who else but Bernard Brogan. Yeah, but fair play to O'Gara once again. He realises that accuracy mightn't be as strong as suit. Gives it off to uh, Bernard Brogan, who's on fire. Brogan does the rest. Kerrigan hasn't seen the ball hardly at all since the match restarted, but this is what he's capable of, Paul Kerrigan. Kerrigan's still going, leaving Nolan in his wake. Now he runs, and there's a gap there, and Kerrigan is dragged back. And he punches the air to try and lift the other 14 Cork men around him. Goulding has to pop this over, no doubt or question about it. Well, a yellow card in the midst of all that for Ross McConnell. Both midfielders now on yellows. Daniel Goulding, it's got to go over. And it does, sailed over. Point number nine. Midway point in the second half. Paddy Kassan. There's a long one in towards Nicholas Murphy. Goal chance perhaps, and he's dragged down on a penalty. Ross McConnell giving the penalty away. And I think it's Colm O'Neill who was rugby tackled in there by Ross McConnell. Yeah, just he's just been booked. Yeah, just watch it again. Takes him down, Ross McConnell panicked a little bit. Forward very clever in the circumstance. Just watch the forward kind of just moves into him, invites the tackle, and McConnell gives it away. This could really kickstart Cork's challenge as they bid to get back to the All Ireland final. Goal for Cork. He sent Cruxton the wrong way. It's a brilliant penalty. They're all brilliant when you score them. Just watch it. Just inside, hits the inside of the post. That was unstoppable, I would argue. A point between them. Eamon Fennell is going to be in for Dublin very shortly. Bernard Brogan, is he the man to lead Dublin to their first final in 15 years? Well, that is a big response from Dublin and from Bernard Brogan. He wants more crystal on the sideboard, it would appear. But the next score after the penalty is Dublin's. It's a two-point game. The Dublin defensive system being tested again. How much do they trust it and believe in it? Will it take them? to the All-Ireland final, well, with that kind of tackling and defending, it will. Michael Fitzsimons, Michael Dara McCauley, Alan Brogan. Bernard is the furthest forward. Shields picking him up. Carey in front of Alan Brogan. Dublin of a free. Brian Cullen screaming for it, trying to get free, and Miskala is trying to pick him up. Here's Cullen. 
Jer Brennan popping up as the extra man. Brian Cullen on his weaker left foot. Cullen steadies down, and that's a great point. Well, they have responded extremely well to the Cork goal. Just watch uh, Cullen this time onto the left foot, takes the responsibility, fires the score. We're in the last 10 minutes, and there's just a goal between them. Colm O'Neill for Cork. Really nice point from Colm O'Neill. Proving his point to his manager as he comes on as the sub. And that was a foul on Daniel Goulding by Michael Fitzsimons. The Dublin defensive discipline has got to be total. This is what happens when it isn't. Yeah, well, he hit his eye fairly and firmly on the ball that time. He just stumbled over him. Oh, they're looking for a goal here. Here's Paddy Kelly. Cluxton was out there, and it's gone over the bar. So now only a point between them. Yeah, that's very quick thinking, must be said. And Paddy Kelly on the end of it. Cluxton coming out very, very quickly. Luckily enough, they didn't concede a goal that time. A lot of tired minds and bodies out there, but they've got a free in. Tony Kassan appealing to the referee. Keeney ends up on the floor, free in. Conal Keeney with the responsibility in the last five minutes of the All-Ireland semi-final. And Keeney slots it over the bar. A two-point game again. Paddy Kelly getting on with it quickly. Pressure on the Dublin defence. Cork's Colm O'Neill is fouled. Point scoring opportunity coming up. Yeah, he goes down very easily there. Dunnick O'Connor of Cork to bring them back to within one. The whistle's awful again, and O'Connor has missed a couple of bad ones, but he slotted that one over. The big man for the big occasion. And another free hit, a foul on Colm O'Neill. Jersey pulled back. And this is Dunnick O'Connor with a chance to equalise. Dunnick O'Connor to tie it up with just two minutes remaining. O'Connor for Cork. The crowd celebrations tell you all you need to know. A draw game, 1-13 apiece. Oh, what a part. Dunnick O'Connor has played in this second half to get Cork back level. But still time for a winner. Dublin have been able to respond to Cork coming back at them in this second half. They got a couple of points after the goal, but Cork have now got two in a row. That was not a clever challenge at all. From Ross McConnell, who has a yellow card against him already, and Ross McConnell has been sent off. Dublin down to 14. We said they would need to keep their discipline and their concentration, and he lost both here. Yeah, we talked about that beforehand. He's so rash in, in, in that tackle at that time. But the game is leveled very, very late on in the match. He needed to be very disciplined in his tackling that time. He wasn't, and it gives Cork the opportunity to go ahead. Dunnick O'Connor, the whistles from the Dublin fans come again. The last minute of normal time, about 20 seconds to go, and O'Connor has slotted it over the bar. He knew from the moment that he kicked it that it was going over. He's been criticised in the past for the quality of his free-taking, but there's nothing wrong with it today. And Dublin way too loose in their half-back line. Here's an opportunity for Derek Kavanagh. Brilliant score for Kavanagh. They got the experienced men on for the last 10 minutes. And Derek Kavanagh pops up in the right place at the right time with a very very fine score 115 to 113 a goal to win it and win a place in the all-ireland final bernard brogan brogan going for the point has he got it yes he has but will there be time for them to get one more was he aware of how much time he had left Cork closing in on a place in the all-ireland final and they're back again they will have the chance to put right the wrongs of 2009, Dublin have fallen short in yet another semi-final.
they led for the first time in this match in the 70th minute and they lead at the end Cork 115 Dublin 114 this team has been knocked so many times through the years and whatever you say about it, even before I was on the panel, the lads kept coming back, kept coming back. You know, we've been called by some people wimps, softies and you know, let's take that personally as well. Like. Obviously we hadn't been playing well but you know, at the same time we created a lot of chances. We were disappointed we didn't take uh, a lot of those but like, we knew that we had the ability to create them and you know, the, the important thing was not to panic, keep our heads. Chances was co would come and it was a matter of enough taking the opportunities when they came. At half time, I thought that game was ours. Would have put the house on it, and I'm, I'm in disbelief. To be honest, I can't really believe what just happened. Um, yeah, I suppose try and keep the heads up and, and, and get on with. It. Incredibly proud of of that group. You know, um, we were in a bad place, I suppose, last year, uh, last August, and um, we've worked really, really hard to to come to what has been really close and a massive gap uh, that had developed between us and the top teams. And I think now we we're, we're there to compete and. Um, you know we're a young side, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll learn a lesson from today. Like I suppose we can look back in last year and like learn in our preparation what we did and what on and off the field, and then um, we absolutely look forward. It's another challenge for us, and you know this team has got to the finals before, and um, it's time to finish the job and we get over the line. And over the line they got Michael Darren McCauley saying there he would have put his house on Dublin. Tony Davis. At what point did you think <laughs> that Cork had it won? Cork had it won. When the final whistle went, was the only time you could really think that Cork had it won because really Dublin dominated nearly all of the game right up to the last five minutes when they really ran out of steam and Cork showed a bit of, a bit of experience. But Dublin really have themselves to thank for losing the game because they absolutely gave away so many stupid frees coming to the end of the game. It was their inexperience and a lot of the tackling they did was totally off the wall. Like when somebody's, you know, somebody's out in the wing and they can score from that angle, you don't foul them. If the ball is into the square and you might be giving away a penalty, you don't take that chance and blow them up, you hold them up. Mm -hmm. So Dublin can thank themselves really for, I think, throwing the, throwing the game away. But Cork, on the other hand, showed their experience. Look, Cork have been in this quite a few occasions. Today they closed it out. And it was great to hear Paul saying there, no, it's about winning, it's about getting over the line. It mightn't be pretty at times, but it's the result that counts. Mm. We'll look at the, some of the tackling later yeah. on and some of the fouls. In relation to that, Dara, though, on a couple of occasions, is it fair to say that the Cork players might have been playing for a free? Yeah, there was a few debatable ones there, Colm O'Neill in particular, uh, going to ground under Rory O'Carroll. But I suppose when you look at that particular one, I'm just using that as an example, Rory O'Carroll does follow through now. Maybe there mightn't have been a foul initially, and there was mm. a certain amount of naivety. M uh, Michael Deegan is, is, is it, uh, you know, he's tight on frees like that, and he, he doesn't, he does tend to, to give, to blow the whistle when, when you go into tackles like that, but there was really only one standout debatable one. The other ones where you have, let's say, Noel O'Leary possibly going to ground, John Miskell going to ground once or twice. I think Dublin players gave enough of an excuse to Michael Deegan to blow yeah. the whistle and mm -hmm. give a free, and that's really what it's about when it's at 100 miles an hour as it is for the referee. Mm -hmm. Did they, Dublin have, they, have a great, they have a great team in the league, Cork, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, keep That's your, so keep your in jokes now for, for <laughs> afterwards. Final yeah. job. T tell me, did you think Dublin ran out of steam, or do you think. No, not too much. I mean, I think. Tactically. That, I, I mean, I, I don't believe that they ran out of steam. You know, the fitness levels are terrific.